Good morning, Options Trading Signals members. This is J.W. Jones coming at you with your Friday morning video analysis. Hope everyone's had a good week so far. Almost uh, ready to roll into the weekend here. I know it's been a pretty slow week for the service in terms of trades. Uh, we closed that SPY position um, Tuesday for uh, for a gain, and then uh, yesterday we closed the Exxon Mobil position. I may have been a little early on the ExxonMobil position closing it before uh, we really had a confirmation, but I just can't sit and watch oil continue to go higher uh, without considering the losses that could, could mount on that position. So I think we did the right thing in closing it. I'm not going to look back uh, and, and second guess it. I think uh, it was the right choice. So, but besides those two trades, we really haven't had a lot to do. We've, we had some selling pressure early in the week, and now we've pretty much reversed uh, the futures, at least at this point, have pretty much reversed that entire move to the downside. I kind of indicated that I expected uh, higher prices, and the reason I did is we haven't actually tested the 2011 highs. That level is just too close. It's got to get tested, and I'm, I'm thinking about a trade for that. Um, and we may actually open a new trade today on the SPY, uh, and, and it'll probably be a calendar spread, and. Uh, Basically, um, what I'm going to target, and, I, and just just for fun, I'm going to explain it right now. Is I'm going to actually target this level. So f for a second, here, if we flip it over to just SPY, I'm sure uh, we can. I can explain this a little bit easier. The SPY intraday high on May 2nd, 2011, was 137.18. Right now we're at 136.63. I think we're going to see that level tested. So what we may do is we may take a 137 SPY call calendar spread uh, with the anticipation of seeing that lo those levels hit sometime next week. Uh, and, and by in doing this, it's got a bullish kind of a bullish uh, flavor to it, and it'll uh, pretty well uh, water down uh, our uh, delta that, that's right now negative when with IYR. And uh, the VIX, even the VIX has the VIX position actually has a positive delta, but I back that into my analysis as as it being negative, uh, because technically, if you're long the VIX, you you might as well be uh, delta negative there. So uh, the trade construction makes the delta positive, but uh, ultimately it, it does benefit from lower prices. So uh, I'm going to use this also as kind of a little hedge over the weekend in case something goofy happens and we see higher prices. Uh, it'll either be the 137 strike or it'll be the 138 strike, uh, one or the other. And we may actually start it off today with a uh, with just a basic. Uh, we may use today's weekly and open it up right at the open. Uh, we'll just wait and see how things play out. But I wanted to at least point that out to members. Jumping back to the futures chart. Uh, what we can see is we we are we have a little more room to go to make it to the all-time 2011 high, but we're still in this range where around 1330 marks the lows, and about 1375 is the highs, and we haven't got there yet, but I think we will in due time. So that's kind of my my expectations are for a dra a drift higher today into the close and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the close somewhere around that 137 strike. The VIX uh, got hammered yesterday and uh, we kind of <laughs> there goes our double bottom potential with the higher <laughs> with the uh, higher low but we still have a uh, major support right down in this area and we may see this level tagged and, and a bounce from that level we may take that level out and, and work to the lows of 2011 but uh, the one positive that we have from this chart is a you know we're we're long a position that is they always say you want to be long stocks that are in the lower right and short stocks in the upper right so this being in the lower right of the of the corner of the chart uh, at some point it is going to turn now whether it, what I don't know that it ever gets up here in 2012 I have no idea if we if we get up above 30 or 40 but uh, to say that we won't at any point in the next two or three months at least touch uh, 25, I think I think the odds favor our probability is high that we'll see 25 at least tested at some point uh, in the next two months. Uh, I believe that 
that there's a, there's a very high probability that that does transpire. So the VIX, uh, we may be in some pain there short term, but I, I still like that trade long term. Uh, if we take a look at IWM, still in the range, hasn't broken out. IWM, even if it did break out, has a long, long way to go before it would ever get to the 2011 highs. So I would argue that, that IWM, the small caps, and here's where the level is, are drastically underperforming the S&P uh, and the NASDAQ. And speaking of the NASDAQ, I'm, I'm going to jump back for a minute here. I failed to I failed to show members this. I want members to, just to see this. I should have shown you this a minute ago. I apologize. I'm jumping back to the NASDAQ futures. So here's the NASDAQ futures daily chart. The line I've got drawn there is actually from the monthlies, and the, the, that is a key breakout level. So the fa that level right there uh, on any, I mean, obviously it would be a major pullback. Um, it would almost be a 10% pullback to get there. But uh, it'd be a seven eight percent pullback, I should say, just to come back and back test this level. But at this point in time, the Nasdaq futures uh, are, are very strong. I think a lot of this has to do with Apple, but it, it still uh, is worth pointing out that we could see a huge sell-off in Nasdaq without it even be breaking down below the break, the key breakout level. So. Uh, this will be major, major support, this line, in the event that we do get any kind of pullback in the future. So back to IWM, uh, as I pointed out, here's our 2011 high, nowhere near it. So the small caps have obviously underperformed the broader indices uh, over the past year. Transports, it's a similar situation there as well. The transports have dramatically underperformed. Here's our 2011 high we can see we're nowhere near it. Um, we're look, talking about a near 10% rally just to test it. And part of what's driving this uh, little sell-off that we've seen in, in transports and weakness there, we did get a nice little reversal candlestick yesterday, is, the, is oil. If oil prices continue to go higher, I think transports are going to break down even lower. Um, and I think, I think you could see uh, some selling pressure there if oil continues to, to grind its way higher. Financials, we take a look at the XLF. They're in a nice little consolidation zone, nowhere near 2011 highs. Uh, so again, almost all of these underlying assets have dramatically underperformed the S&P. Now does that mean that if the rest of the year we stay pretty bullish that these indices are going to have to cat play catch up and really, really show some, some uh, you know some some strength, some relative strength, that could happen. We could see the financials play catch up. We could see uh, the uh, small caps play catch up. The transports are less likely just simply because of where oil prices are. I think if oil hangs around a hundred dollars a barrel or higher most of the year, that uh, transports are going to are going to be for sale quite a bit. Um, and and then ultimately with with all this underperformance, we still have had a really strong rally. In all these stocks since October, so strong rally since October, but we haven't even gotten anywhere near the highs, except in the S&P and, and the Nasdaq's taken out highs, and the Dow is taking out highs. So it's um, it's all very interesting uh, the way this market is is performing. Emerging markets yesterday sold off and then snapped back to about break even by the close. They're just in a nice little consolidating range, waiting for a break in either direction, as can be seen. Looking at a near uh, seven to eight percent move just to get to 2011 highs, so similar to the rest of the uh, underlying assets, there's no. It's very. It's shown basically relative weakness against the broader indices uh, over the past year, year and a half. Quick look at the dollar index futures. Dollar index futures uh, are, are trading at a very critical level. They got here quicker than I would have expected, and. Um, from here it's going to be very critical to see which direction price goes. Uh, we are getting a bit of a bounce this morning um, right at the uh, support level I've got drawn here. We haven't quite got down to it but if we get a real strong reversal into next week in a double bottom and then we can take out this highs it could, it's going to put a ton of pressure on stocks. However if this thing continues to, to get ugly, if this level breaks 
I think we could see a very sharp sell-off in the dollar, which I think drives gold, silver, and oil through. I think it drives them all ballistic. I mean, I'm talking, you could see some huge moves, because I think this, if it breaks, it's going to be sharp. I don't think it's going to be a little trickle down. I think there's a lot of eyes on this level, and uh, from what I've gathered, it, in my reading, just looking around and reading around the blog, uh, reading a lot of blogs around there to focus on the dollar or focus on commodities, there's a lot of bears out there on the dollar. And uh, the the thing here is, if it does break, you're almost you've almost got a guarantee that if it does you're going to see the 200 day tested and now you're going to be uh, in a left translated cycle it, it, it gets we're we're in very dangerous territory with the dollar here uh for a, for a fast you know trap door sell off that would could drive oil and gold and then the gold and silver isn't as big of an issue as oil if oil goes up another 4 or 5 dollars a barrel it's going to start putting a pressure on the economy it's going to it's going to start stinging and uh it's already high enough, and I, I think uh, people are, gonna, are are already impacted by it now. I think they get impacted by it even more uh, down the road if it continues to go higher. Gold futures, uh, gold is getting pulling back a little bit. It's been pretty strong here the last uh, several sessions, but it is pulling back. Wouldn't be shocked to see it come back and back test this little breakout level. Might offer a really good long entry. It's it's something that I'm definitely going to consider. Uh, I I like gold uh, for the long haul much better than I like it in short term. It's, it can be difficult to trade short term, but long term I really really like gold uh, just because of all the money that's been printed and the, and the central bank balance sheet expansion. I think the fundamental case for gold is very strong. I just think there needs there's some patience there, and I think buying on dips for long term. Uh, buys and or buy and hold, you know, is is a is a good strategy there. Uh, and silver, silver had a nice little breakout yesterday. Came up, tagged the uh, recent highs, took out the 200 day with like a warm knife through butter. Uh, but we have tested the little pivot high here. I think that's gonna. I don't think we're gonna break that level on the first try. What we may do is we may pull back, come back down, find support again, and then try again. Or we may just consolidate for a while at this level. Uh, before it gets enough momentum to break out, I like silver just as well. There's a giant. Notice this this pattern here. This looks like a giant inverse head and shoulders pattern to me. And it, if this thing breaks, then the re, the resulting move uh, is is pretty significant. Um, and this is another reason why I'm a little concerned about the dollar. You're talking about a roughly a nine point move, which would put us uh, in this range in the 40 to 45 uh, 40. The, somewhere up testing these this area right in here would be a very very strong move obviously so uh, that's something we're going to definitely be monitoring oil futures are pulling back this morning a little bit uh, getting a retracement of the big move yesterday uh, we'll be watching I'm going to be watching this pretty closely I would love to see oil come back down and tag this level right here and hold because if it does we're going to get long uh, oil but uh, for now, I don't want to chase it at, this, at these levels just yet. I'd like to see some form of a pullback with a nice reversal that'll get us back in long oil. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll watch, continue to watch it, and see how, the, how it plays out throughout the day. Uh, see if it can if it can reverse and, and go higher still. Thirty-year Treasury futures uh, had a nice move yesterday on a strong seven-year Treasury bond. Or excuse me, Treasuries in general had a nice move uh, to the upside yesterday on a very strong seven-year Treasury auction um, at this point just to, to point out to members for the first time in American history uh, besides during World War two I think uh, or perhaps at the very beginning uh, of the re Republic uh, but ultimately our GDP has uh, been our debt now exceeds GDP uh, the G the debt to GDP ratio is about a hundred and one percent so we have uh, about one one percent more debt than what our what our total GDP is, and that that's not a good sign, especially the fact that it's probably going to continue to go higher. Uh, but at, at any rate, the uh, thirty-year Treasuries are coming into resistance, kind of in the, in the lower quadrant of the range, with the fifty-day and twenty-day period, twenty fifty-day and twenty-day moving averages straight straight overhead. 
10-year Treasury, similar action yesterday, very strong move. Was able to hold uh, at that support level, and, and now we're getting a push right above the 50-period moving average, trying to get to the 20-period next. Uh, there's probably going to be a little resistance there, but we do have, uh, if we can get above the 20-period moving average, we get some blue sky up to the, the, recent, the recent resistance areas and the recent highs. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, I think uh, we it's going to be a pretty quiet day today. Be ready for at least one trade on the SPY. If I find something else that I really like, I'm not going to hesitate to take it. It's been a slow week, but we uh, I'm not going to force any trades. But if I really if I find something I really really like, we'll we'll take advantage of it. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Hope everyone uh, has a good day today. Let's go get them and uh, enjoy the the forthcoming weekend after the session ends. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. This is J.W. Jones signing off for OptionsTradingSignals.com.